All right, well, hey, good day, guys. This is uh, Roberto Manja here in New York City. Just survived the polar vortex of 2019. Um, happy to be here in this chat. Um, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. It's at Roberto Manje, and that's R O B E R T O. Last name is M A N D J E. So happy to be here. Right, thank you. Let's get right into it. So, for those that don't know you, uh, what like what's your career been like, and what you doing now? Um, yeah, I started. Um, I started, I guess, gaining a little bit of following when I ran to the Olympics in 2004, yeah. back in athletics, so 1500 and steeplechase. And then after that, I ran professionally for several years. I lived down in Boulder, Colorado, traveled all around the world. Um, always loved making videos and just kind of connecting with my family back in Barcelona. So that's kind of how I got more and more into social media. Also interacting with uh, fans or the audience, different audiences and my yep. sponsors. And then, uh, yeah, eventually 2016, I decided to retire and move back to the U.S. from uh, Germany, where I was living with my wife and and our one-year-old at the time. And then uh, I got a job with the uh, New York Roadrunners. So oh, yeah. we um, a nonprofit organization and we put on the New York City Marathon. So that's kind of what we're known for. And right now my role is a uh, head of training, but in that role, right. I actually work with a lot of people from beginners to more experienced runners. And also work with some celebrity runners. And that's how I've gotten um, to know some of the people like Casey Neistat, uh, Neve Schulman, and a few others. Uh, so what got you into running and what age were you when you started? Uh, I was a young kid in South Africa, uh, primary school, I think maybe fifth year or so. And um, I just, we had a field day and we just had to run a few laps around a giant field or something. And I was the second fastest kid in the whole school. Oh. And from there on, it kind of just evolved that every time I'd play a sport like football or basketball and the coach made us uh, run laps for punishment. It ended up not being a punishment for me. I always had pretty good endurance. So I just kept running and would always be amongst the first, if not the first. So eventually I thought, sure, this has got to be a sport right there. So I looked into it and there was running. And yeah. when I came over to the U.S. in the mid nineties, I was, uh, I ran a mile in gym class and I ran pretty fast and broke a school record for the middle school. And, uh, I got invited to run for the varsity at the high school level, and that's what I did all the way through high school, and then I eventually went to university and beyond. All right. Uh, was there anyone in particular that motivated you to start? Um, not really, to be honest. I, I would say maybe my parents in general, just because uh, my family's pretty athletic, uh, my mom uh, in particular. So shout out to mom. Thanks for the genes. And uh, yeah, but not nobody really, I, I guess, I just started seeing other athletes around me, but uh, as a young kid, even though it's not my sport now, I was really looking more at Michael Jordan and those sort of guys. So, um, but yeah, no, no one particular person. I guess I've always been pretty self-driven and motivated just because I want to be as good as I can in anything I do, whether it's athletics or any other sport or any other aspect of life. Uh, out of all your races, what do you think your best one's been? <sighs> Good question. I um, I don't know. Um, I've had so many, and some of them might not have been the the ones where I ran the fastest. Some of them might have been the one where I actually might have had the worst time, but I was able to gut it through and, and yeah. stick it through. Because you sometimes learn more from your quote unquote failures and your successes. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I'd probably say maybe the Xterra Trail World Running Championships in, right. I believe, 2013 or so. I finished right. fifth in the world at that. And um, it's a brutal course. It's got a lot, a lot of hills, and it's super muddy. And it's out there in, in uh, Hawaii on the North Shore. And, I mean, maybe that one or another Xterra Championship I did in uh, Las Vegas. So, okay. But, yeah, I, th I think any race that I overcame some sort of mid-race hardship or just what's up against it because otherwise it's like it's too easy to say oh well every race that won was my favorite so yeah uh, good so, question yeah do you have any advice for brand new runners just starting out um definitely enjoy it and uh get into it because you because you love it and it's okay if you don't love it right away but definitely make sure it's not you're not come across it as a punishment and yeah. uh Definitely err on the side of caution. Get a lot, a lot of recovery. Make sure that you're not 
doing too much too soon because a lot of people think more is more, but sometimes less is more. So enjoy the process, set a bunch of small goals along the way, but make sure that you are, you know, believing yourself and are having a good time because otherwise yeah. why do anything? Mm -hmm. uh, how can people stay disciplined when they start running? Um, I, I think setting small intermediate goals is the best way to go about it because that way they're not too far ahead of you. They're, they're attainable. So you're able to set a goal like this week, I'm going to run, I don't know, let's say 30 kilometers and then you get across that and you, you break it down, you make it. And then next week I'm going to try to run 32 or 35 and you kind of build up on that. Or maybe you're going to try to run five kilometers in 25 minutes and then kind of work your way down. So that's a good way because they're small manageable goals versus saying, okay, this is day one and I hope to run uh, 5k in 17 minutes. And it's like, well, how do you get from wherever you are to, to that sort of goal? So yeah, good advice. Thank you. Uh, so what have you crossed off in your bucket list and what else do you still have to do? God, yeah. Hit me with the good questions. Eh? Um, I guess, uh, parenthood. Um, I've always wanted to, you know, start a family and my wife and I have two little kids. So that's my best and number one job. So I've kind of crossed that off, although obviously love to keep growing the family. But um, as far as I don't necessarily have a bucket list, I don't live my life that way. But I guess other things I still want to accomplish is um, just raise my kids right and, and give them all the tools that, that I can so they could have a yeah. be well adjusted uh, kids and, and adults someday but um, I guess maybe for me maybe see more of the world I've, I've lived all yeah. over and I've traveled all over but I want to travel more of the world with my wife who hasn't had that opportunity so I guess that would be a bucket list but it's more for her than me yeah and what kind of places would you want to see um, I think we try to go as far east as possible so yeah. um, Asia I, I've been there a few times now my wife hasn't been and uh, it, I just love to experience maybe new things through other people's eyes whether it's in coaching and running or in this case traveling with my wife and and kids and just kind of show them the world so that that that'd be it um go out as far east and then hit australia new zealand and you know kind of start working our way back west uh, and what's your what was your biggest challenge in your running career um another good question the biggest challenge i would say maybe getting the best out of my 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 talents in actual races um i i kept evolving as i as i ran and become became stronger and stronger mentally and, and also not so being so hard on myself i was always very very hard on myself so sometimes winning wasn't enough i was chasing a specific standard or things like that so that 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 would i would say was um the biggest thing I had to overcome, but eventually I, I became better at it and, and learned to, you know, just be kinder to myself and yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so in your career, you ran middle distance and long distance. Do you prefer one of the two or just the same? Um, I prefer mixing it up, you know. Um, my favorite season growing up and and it still is was cross country because yeah. you raised different different surfaces um different courses even if the distance was always the same which in many cases it wasn't so, and then when i got into trail running for the last part of my career it was the same thing you know you run 20k or 15k or 10 or or longer but you hilly terrain flat gravelly so um, so I, I would say both. Um, I, I think I was the kind of person that would get too tired and uh, too bored rather of running, you know, three and three quarter laps around the track or only 12 and a half laps. So I, I like switching it up and kind of testing myself that way. Hey, right, cool. So if you were an absolute beginner and you were going to run a marathon, what would your training be? Um, I would definitely put in several months of base training and mm -hmm. for the listeners, other base training means you're just running nice and easy, comfortable miles for, you know, let's say two months, which is eight weeks or, or 12 weeks, which is three months. Um, that way you start to create the base, meaning the foundation, you get stronger aerobically. That way you can start to put in the type of mileage you might need to, to accomplish your goal and also support the workouts that you're going to need to do to accomplish your marathon goal. Even if it's just finishing and those are workouts like tempos, um, speed days, fart legs, and of course the cornerstone, which is a long run. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So do you recommend stretching, warming up and cooling down for your runs? Yeah, definitely. I, I think all that has a place in, 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 in your training and your given running day. Uh, there's a lot of controversy out there as far as do you stretch before or after. And I think if you're going to stretch a little bit before the run, it's definitely better afterwards, I would say. But if you're going to stretch a little bit before the run, make sure that your muscles are warmed up, you know, and don't just hop out of bed in the morning and start doing some, you know, really dynamic stretches and then go out the door because you could pull something. But if you get up in the morning, you walk around your flat or your home and you're a little bit loose, then you could do some sort of stretches. But it's definitely better to stretch um, after the run and then a cool down for sure. It helps flush some of the uh, lactic acid buildup that we could have in certain runs after a run or after a race. Uh, also helps kind of gradually bring the your heart rate down. So it kind of brings you back to your uh, state uh, normal levels. Very cool. Um, so what would your pre-run routine be like for the night before and the morning of a marathon? Uh, before a race? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the day before a race, depending on the distance, but um, I would run a few miles, maybe mm. two to three miles maximum and very, very easy. But this is me, of course, because I have yeah. a, a bigger foundation. If you're a new runner and you're only going to run a 5k or even a half marathon or whatever just run um you know run either a mile or two or run by minutes i'm going to run for uh 10 to 20 minutes nice and easy just to kind of work out the nerves and get loose up, and then you know have a nice meal and get to bed and hopefully you can sleep well sometimes people have a hard time because of the pre pre-race nerves and then the morning of the same thing uh assuming your race is in the morning just do a nice um you know 10 to 20 minute easy jog just to get loosened up and work out some of the nerves, do some stretches and then put on your racing shoes or spikes or whatever it is and uh, have a good crack. Right. Uh, so what are your plans and your goals for the rest of 2019? Uh, the rest, I mean, we only just got to February, but uh, yeah, um, within my role at New York Roadrunners, I definitely want to continue helping and inspire people through running and, and helping people just achieve their goals. So that's the beauty about me being retired and I can really turn my attention around and, and my focus and put it on other people. So I really want to help um, as many people as I can to enjoy running, to educate them in running and, and, and break have breakthroughs because I've seen so many people set massive PBs I didn't think they could even accomplish half of what they go on to accomplish. So that's essentially my goal for 2019 on a on a personal but also business um, side of things. So then aside from that, just continue to explore. I mean, I I don't run as much as I used to, so that allows me more time with my friend my friends and family and a lot more time to play football or one in the US they call soccer. So I'm just continuing to get better at that and and cheer on FC Barcelona to a Champions League title. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been good talking to you. Is there anything you want to say to the audience? No, mate. I really appreciate you uh, reaching out. And if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a note. But I appreciate the time. All right, cool. Thanks very much. All right, bye. All right, mate. See ya.